Hi, my name's Cheese, and welcome to another Bonesweeper progress update video. If you haven't heard of Bonesweeper before, you check out this other video for an overview. But the TLDR is, it's Minesweeper, but you're digging up fossils, and you get to build skeletons out of the stuff you find. For the past month or so, I've had slightly reduced productive output, but I have found time to do a bunch of miscellaneous fixes and tweaks, some research, and to make a start on fossil finishes. Peter and Jasmine have also been working on new music and sound effects respectively. Toward the end of September, I started work on implementing multiple fossil materials. In the real world, the process of fossilization can result in fossils having very different compositions and looks. To reflect this in Bone Sweeper, individual dig sites now pick a material from a list specific to the location that will be used for all fossils found at that site. Since the idea is that players will accumulate fossils from multiple dig sites before being able to assemble a complete skeleton, having some variation in fossil materials will help convey their composite nature. Right now the materials themselves are placeholder, but I'm looking forward to eventually representing different types of mineralization and so on. I still have some extra work to do on this front to make sure that individual fossils will track their origins, so that in the museum phase players will be able to see where and when fossils that comprise the skeleton came from. One of the prompts for the weekly 3D modeling practice sessions I run was Flag, so I spent some time making new alternate dig tile markers. There's now 8 or so in the game all up. Some are a little silly, but they'll all look a lot better once I've had time to animate them. For now, it's just nice to have some extra customization options. Peter's been working on a new music track. I'll let him tell you about it himself. When I started working on the soundtrack, uh, at first I consciously wanted to avoid marimba sounds because in my head there'd been a real signature instrument of the Hive Time soundtrack, and I just didn't want to do that kind of thing again. Uh, but there's no getting away from it. We're making a game about bones, and for some reason, tune percussion instrument just sounds quite bony. And so I made a use of them and other kinds of tune percussion in this soundtrack too. A newer thing here is uh, using strings and other orchestral elements, which I didn't do so much in Hive Time. Sometimes in the background, providing some ambience, and sometimes more upfront and adventurous, like in the map music. Tonally, I'm using a lot of what's called the Lydian mode, which is a scale where the fourth degree is raised, and what that does is produce a lot of melodies and chords which evoke a sense of mystery and wonder. I think there's something very wonder-inducing about rediscovering and trying to interpret what these bones and fossils are telling us. I think it's a job that people would really fall into unless they come to it with that sense of curiosity and wonder, and so I'm hoping that comes across a bit in the soundtrack. We're conscious that the music, especially when digging, shouldn't be too distracting, so I'm trying to take an approach which focuses more on texture and vibe than melody in the dig music, but in the end my writing is very wrapped up in melody, and so at the moment it's hard to say how much of that will really come through. But it's there, a little bit. Uh, next, I'd like to start working on the music for the museum. The latest piece I've been working on was an attempt at that, but ended up being more suitable for the digging, and so soon I'll be taking another run at it. Continuing the fossil material work I'd done for the dig phase, I updated the assembly phase to randomly choose from fossil materials in the player's inventory when stashing fossil chunks. This allows the player to indirectly cycle through what's available. Jasmine has been working on some new sound effects, including new fossil chunk placed sounds for the assembly phase, which I've just added to the game. She's also done some work on environmental audio for the dig phase, but I haven't gotten around to implementing that yet. In September, Peter put together the first music concept for the assembly phase, which builds cohesion and energy as it progresses. I really like the idea that this mirrors the form from chaos aspect of assembling a skeleton from a pile of bones. Over the past week, I've been working to improve transitions from the map phase to the dig phase, adding in a smaller, secondary travel line that passes out a path to the local destination while the dig site is generated in the background. Right now they're angular and not very pretty, but I like that they give some visual activity during what is effectively a loading screen, and I hope that it makes the transition from 3D scene to 2D screenshot a little less obvious. Across the past month or so, I've put more attention into refining phase transitions to create a generic set of animations that transitions can use. Dig and assembly phase end screens now use the slide animation to bring information in at the top and bottom of the screen on top of letterboxing, and then crossfade to the map landmass color so that the dig scene can be unloaded and the map scene loaded in without any visual jumps. 
I had a new blind player come on board to give test builds a try, which prompted me to notice and fix a couple of text-to-speech bugs. I also implemented TTS for phase end screens, as well as the descriptive help shortcut for the map phase which I had been putting off for some reason. Toward the end of September, I was able to sit down for a chat with Dr. David Hocking, the curator of vertebrate zoology and paleontology at the Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery. His focus isn't Mesozoic animals, but I was able to get a bunch of useful insights out of our conversation. It's been reassuring to have someone in the field give comments on my plans and intentions, and he has a couple of ideas that I'm planning to implement, such as getting dig site markers onto the timeline in the map phase. A very big thank you to the supporters going by on screen at the moment. Their supporters help me eat while making this game, and I am so very appreciative. Special thanks to new supporter Marvin R. A huge thanks also to Screen Tasmania, who supported this project with a small grant at the end of last year. Anyway, that's about it for today. If you'd like to keep track of development or try the playable prototype, you can find some links in the description. And if you're super keen to check out what we've talked about here today, I make early test builds available to my Patreon supporters. Thanks for watching, and bye!